Cipriano Picolpasso was a writer in Renaissance Italy. He wrote a book called The Potter's Art in 1548. It's illustrated charmingly with sketches of potters at work and with recipes that still make sense today. Picolpasso, I thought, it's a nice word. It also means little step. So that's a life philosophy in terms of one's own journey. It seemed an appropriate name for my workshop. Although my color palette has definitely changed and become more subtle in terms of the coloring that I see around me now, rather than those Mediterranean colors, the idea of putting patterns together and the way that colors zing off each other, that's been my main interest, really. I like to feel that the exuberance of the patterns and the, the spontaneity of the brushwork is as it would have appeared on those Yolica pharmacy jars back in the medieval times. It's the mark of the make of the brushwork that makes them so appealing. I'm very interested in surface pattern, surface decoration, but the thing that grabs you about ceramics is the quality of the glazes. I think the way the light plays off a glazed surface is endlessly fascinating. And different glazes, they're naturally occurring materials. The light plays off them in different ways. Majolica painting, like watercolor painting, on a glazed surface which is absorbent means that once you've committed to the brush stroke, you can't change it. So it may be imperfect, but it's there, it's fixed. And once it's fired to well over a thousand degrees, it becomes a hard surface and it's captured that brush stroke and it's a very personal moment fixed onto a tile. I can't think of any other medium that works in quite the same way. They're all more considered and more reproducible, really. It gives freshness to the work. Each tile is different. I tend to work in a series of tiles, and so one evolves into another, and I look at the way that the glazing has worked and the way that colors have worked together, and it's very dependent on the thickness of the glaze. I do a lot of layering glazes, and if you place them on top of each other in a different order, you get a different result, and that makes it very interesting. But it also does mean that each one is slightly different from its neighbor, and that adds for variety. When people put them up on their walls, I hope they see that similarity but difference all the time. I like to say that the tiles play together as they work and play on the surface. Sometimes it's quite difficult to define that. I have to look freshly, consistently at what's in front of me and that's why I do a lot of arranging, rearranging, trying this, turning it round, looking freshly. That is part of the fun. The people that come into my workshop who are looking for tiles, I can tell that they enjoy that process of chinking through the tiles, lifting things out that appeal to them, putting them with others, seeing how that changes them. It's part of a collaborative, creative process. It's nice to pick them up, hold them, feel them, they've got depth. It's a satisfying process. I like to think they gain character through the process. And you need the quiet ones as well as the loud ones so that your eye can rest. That's why I make plain tiles too and subtle stripes so they're not all shouting for attention. I feel that I owe it to people to focus on what I'm doing and make each of those tiles as interesting as they can possibly be.